Well, that just shows you how weak this rock's going to be that I'm talking about this week. Do you want to know what this rock is in my hand? I'm going to tell you. This week we're going to talk about mudstone. Now, mudstone's a sedimentary rock. We've not spoke about sedimentary rocks before. So we have to kind of go into the details about how a sedimentary rock forms and how you get this mudstone forming as well, right? Now, mudstone is fine-grained. It's very fine-grained and it's in the name mud. It's made up of mud. What is mud? Well, mud basically is anything that's like, you know, tiny, like little wee clay particles or silt particles that have just kind of compacted into a rock over time, right? So, to kind of get an understanding of this, we need to talk about sedimentary rocks and the rock cycle, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, how do we get a sedimentary rock? Well, the first process involved in this is obviously going to be some sort of erosion and weathering process. It's probably up in the mountains somewhere, right? where there's erosion, there's chemical weathering, there's physical weathering, and that all kind of breaks up the rocks. And these rocks can be originally igneous, they can be sedimentary, or they can be metamorphic, right? So we're getting these rocks broken down over geological time, and then you get the transportation of all these particles. These particles usually form a different variety of sedimentary rocks, which I have in front of me, but today we're only going to go into mudstone, right? And that can be from mud-sized particles, clay-sized particles, silt-sized particles, sand-sized particles, which form sandstone, to, you know, even bigger than that, gravel, cobble, boulder-sized particles, which eventually can form, like, you know, conglomerates and that, right? So, when you think about it, we have to have the transportation of this, of, well, no this, exactly, but of these particles. And over geological time, they can be transported by wind, water, you know, ice. We can see these processes ongoing today. When you look at your local river, your, your local stream or that, look at like what it's carrying with it. It's carrying sediment down with it and those can be clay-sized particles, sand-sized particles, silt-sized particles, blah, blah, blah. And eventually it's going to dump it somewhere. And we get different depositional environments depending on where you are in the world and what's there, you know, if there's any space. That's the second kind of thing to do with sedimentary rocks is for you to have sedimentary rocks form, you need space. Think about it as like a puddle, for instance, like a dent in the road. There's like a cavity there. Eventually that will fill up with like grains of like stuff that's just been transported down the road or whatever. That's probably a really bad example. <laughs> Think about the sea. You know, you have like, for instance, this is the sea, right? And you've got like rivers. I'm gonna draw it in blue because water should be blue in colour. Maybe make that a little bit deeper. <laughs> they come down, you know, from the mountains. And eventually it gets to the sea. And it starts dumping out the heavier stuff first, usually. It can dump out things along the way. You can dump out sand-sized particles along riverbeds, channels, etc. Conglomerates as well, depending on your higher energy and lower energy environments, like, or whether or not there's more water that's pushing all this stuff down. But eventually it gets to the sea, right? And usually you have your sand-sized particles that kind of come out first, usually creating like a delta, right? Or whatever. That's probably not the best example, right? But what happens to your clay, your clay minerals and your silt particles, they all are suspended out because they're a lot lighter. They're suspended out into like the deep or ocean, deep marine environment, and they're kind of spread out. And they just kind of settle to the bottom, obviously, of the sea. Or this can be a lake, or it can be a lagoon instead. Like, you know, like there's different types of environments that these sedimentary rocks form in. Like, it's, well, there's different types of environments the mudstone forms in. Just depends on where you are in the world, right? So, mudstone, clay minerals, and they form in quiet, low energy environments. And as I said before, they're usually suspended out, can be deposited into a lake, can be deposited into 
the sea, deep marine environment. It can be in a lagoon where there's hardly any disturbance. That's the main key. There's hardly any disturbance for this stuff. So it doesn't kind of, you know, get mixed in with a lot of stuff. Like a good example of it here is this piece of rock that I've acquired from a quarry. That's why it's cut like this. You can see the fresh piece like here, but you've also got these bands in between. And some of these are mudstone. This is a lake deposit known as the Caithness flagstone. It's found in northeast Scotland in Caithness, obviously because it's called Caithness flagstone, right? And they quarry it. It's a very good rock for a paving slab to use as a paving slab, right? Just because it's durability in that. But it's part of the old red sandstone group, which formed during the Devonian period 400 million years ago. And what happened during that period of time is it was just after that great mountain building event that I always speak about in my videos called the Caledonian Erosion. And you then started getting the erosion and all the weathering of those mountains that were in this kind of central part of Scotland, like in the Highlands. And as you had that, there was like a big massive basin. Because remember, to form a sedimentary rock, you need space. You need a basin, is what geologists refer to it as. So this basin then started filling up with sediment. And it was subsiding at the time as well. So you can imagine there was a lot of sediment getting carried from rivers, like from, you know, the mountains, right? And this was all getting dumped into this lake, known as Lake Orcada, back in the day. Now, during the Devonian period as well, this was known as the Age of Fishes, the time of, you know, Age of Fishes, 400 million years ago. And they've actually found in northeast Scotland, some of these lovely beds have fossilised fish in them. Well, not any of these. I mean, if there was, I would have it out and show you, but not in these ones. These are just like a combination of mudstones and siltstones interbedded with each other. I can actually see like at the top of this bed here, there's like some grains in there that look like it's going into a sandstone, a fine grained sandstone. So siltstones, sandstones and mudstones interbedded with each other over and over again. Right. So I, back during that period of time, age of fishes, like it was a, a lake, right? So you had fishes swimming about and obviously those fish, when they die, what happens to them? They end up like, you know, da 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 da, wee wee the fish, die, sinks to the bottom. And you've got this, like these layers accumulating right over time. And because there's, it was an anoxic environment, so there's no oxygen in this particular case. There's no scavengers at the bottom of this. So because the, the kind of fish, you know, they kind of lay there dead and they were buried quite rapidly because of the deposition of this, right? Which moves on to the next thing, talking about sedimentary rocks and talking about how mudstone turns from clay particles into a mudstone. Eventually, over geological time, as you get layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer, I can go on for ages. You then have the weight of these layers you then have compaction happen and you have cementation. So compaction and cementation are two very important processes in forming your rock. Compaction, basically the weight of all the other layers, squeezes and pushes the rocks down. The weight of everything else on top of it eventually compacts those rocks, those sediments, and turns them into rock, right? Cementation is when you have like a cement kind of go through them. So usually all the water squeezed out like that's in the sea when it's compaction, right? But you have groundwater running through the rocks, okay? And groundwater contains cement, cement like cements that kind of cement, like, you know, stuff together. Like that could be calcite, that could be, you know, quartz or whatever, like hydrous, like kind of minerals that will start cementing and gluing these little wee particles together. And this is, you're talking millions of years here, right? Geological time, millions of years, okay? And that's how you get the formation of mudstone. Um, not going to lie, sedimentary rocks aren't my favourite rocks to talk about. Uh, they are very, they're not boring, they're just, I like my Agnes and Mert Mosby rocks, but I will still go into different types of sedimentary rocks because they are just as important. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Woo! Mudstone. If you like these videos, then definitely subscribe. Something new, something to learn about. Learn about your local rocks and that. Learn how to identify different rock types. And if you have any, any questions or you want to know what a certain rock type is, then leave a wee comment at the bottom and I'll get back to you and make a video on 
the rock type that you want to know about eventually. But yeah, thank you.